Well, welcome to part three of economic growth. I bet you can't wait. So, in part three, what we're going to look at is the important topic of demand and supply side shocks. These are important because they can come up in the exam, but also because they can cause a recession or a boom. They, in fact, can cause and influence the economic cycle. So, on the board here, we've got our familiar aggregate demand and aggregate supply analysis. Um, on the left, we've got uh, supply side shocks. On the right, we have demand side shocks. Um, on the top, um, we've got negative shocks, and on the bottom, positive demand and supply side shocks. Okay, so let's look at what causes these shocks. Um, one key cause of demand side shock is anything that leads to a change in consumption, investment, government expenditure, or of course net exports. So any sudden change of these, either caused externally, which we've referred to as an exogenous shock, something has occurred outside the UK, which affects these either positively or negatively in an unexpected way, or um, a change, unexpected change in costs from outside the UK would be endogenous and would shift the supply curve. If it occurs within the UK, we call that endogenous, meaning internally. So let's just look at some examples. Um, should we start at the top here? At the top here, we have a rightward shift and short and aggregate supply. Okay. Sorry, I can't read. A leftward shift and aggregate and short and aggregate supply. That is a negative supply side shock. Look what happens. It leads to a fall in output and an increase in the price level. In fact, cost push inflation. So here, we've got two problems here. One, output is fallen. It perhaps has created a recession. Um, which you know the definition of sure, and it's also caused an increase in inflation. People aren't very happy. Um, now, what could cause this? Well, an exogenous supply side shock could be something like the quadrupling of oil prices between 2004 and 2008, or in 1974. Um, many industries and many firms, even in the service sector, are dependent on oil to some extent. Indeed, just look at this, a nice cup of tea, which I'm like drinking. This cup is made of polystyrene, which comes from oil. The tea would have been transported using oil. So this ricochets throughout the whole economy and leads to high price levels and a falling output. So that would be an exogenous negative supply side shock. Now you could have an endogenous one internally, perhaps. You could have trade unions uh, that force up wages by threatening strike action, and this could lead to an explosion in wages, in real wages. That's wages going up more quickly than the rate of inflation. And this again would shift short and aggregate supply to the left, um, such as occurred perhaps in the late 70s, 78, 79, before Mrs. Thatcher came to power. Now, looking uh, here, we'll stick on the supply side, we've got a positive supply side shock. An endogenous one could be the revolution in ICT and the development of amazing products such as a smartphone, um, which I'm quite addicted to. Um, and this has boosted potential output of the economy by increasing productivity. Uh, the internet is a good example, um, although it doesn't seem like it perhaps when you're rising and you're addicted to Facebook. Anyhow, uh, an exogenous supply side shock. Um, is positive, this is a positive one, shift short and supply to the right, because it's increasing, suddenly increasing productivity in, across the board in, on, for many firms. Now here, we could have an endogenous supply side shock, and, one, uh, and a positive one, and one that occurred for the UK economy in the 70s into the 80s was the discovery of North Sea Isle. And this is certainly the case in Norway, and this has suddenly shifted short and aggregate supply to the right. Now, if this oil stays on tap, of course, eventually it should long an aggregate supply to variety and increasing the potential output to the economy. But an in initial growth of North Sea oil could, could should short an supply to variety. Now, looking at the demand side, also important, here we have a, 
a negative demand side shock. So an endogenous one to the UK economy it could be a collapse in house prices, such as occurred in the early 90s. Um, this leads to a negative net wealth effect and a fall in consumer confidence so that consumption falls and probably investment falls too because there will be a fall in business confidence. Certainly uh, there will be a left foot shift because consumption will be falling, everybody will shift to left, look what happens. We have a fall in the national output and the price level also falls. So one positive thing, there will probably be less inflation but certainly less output and probably a rise in unemployment. Um, and an exogenous shock might be the Wall Street crash in 1929. This led to a negative wealth effect in the USA. This would lead to a fall in our in consumption in the USA and therefore a fall in our exports to the USA and therefore a fall in aggregate demand as exports fall for the UK and a left will shift of aggregate demand. Um, <clears throat> now look, this is a negative supply side shock here. And this is a neg sorry, negative demand side shock here, a negative supply side shock here. Which is worse? Well, I would tend to think this is worse because you're getting inflation out of fall now, but when it's here, at least inflation is falling even in our portfolios. Something worth mentioning. Coming to the final demand side shock, we have a positive demand side shock here. And this perhaps arose when house prices increased significantly. So they tripled, for example, from the early 90s till 2008 in the UK. And they also went up significantly in the late 80s. This led to a positive net wealth effect and increased consumer confidence and therefore increased consumption. So consumption will increase, aggregate demand will suddenly shift to the right and there will be a boom, perhaps, an increase in output, but sadly also an increase in the price level. And here, again, remember we've got a positive supply side shock, okay, which you mentioned, and look what happens, we get an increase in output, but remember a fall in the price level. Um, so here we have um, perhaps a, an exogenous demand side shock might be an increase in demand for our products from a great country like China. Um, obviously exchange rates can cause uh, shocks, uh, supply side and demand side shocks, but we'll cover that on the video on exchange rates. So thank you very much. Practice these questions and remember these four key diagrams. Remember exogenous is external, endogenous is internal, positive will boost output, negative will reduce output. Have fun. Thank you very much.